Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf Airsoft Gaming, and I'm going to be continuing the DMR series with episode 6, Installing the Fusion Engine. So this episode isn't going to be too long, and that's because there's not too much to it. I'm just here to share my experiences with the problems that I had installing mine and how I got around those and the modification I've done to the um, Fusion Engine itself. So, uh, to start off, I started with a basic new 2016 Fusion Engine, literally made um, in the month of May 2016. That includes the red low flow pop up valve already installed from the manufacturer as well as the red nozzle. Um, this is for maximum air efficiency. Um, this one, the pop it valve, uh, because of the size, it's uh, decreased there. The hole um, will give you a lot more shots because it uses less air. And to counteract that, use a wide bore nozzle um, to get more of their, that air out. Um, so overall, less PSI, more air efficiency stock from the factory. So it's pretty cool they've um, included those. I went ahead and installed an amped purple um, nozzle there, which is the equivalent to a red plus without the problem, so it's even wider than this. Um, I think it's up to, with 120 PSI, it's something like close to 600. I don't think it's exactly 600, but around 600 FPS. And the amped low flow pop it valve um, that's purple, which is the exact same size as this. Um, I wasn't expecting them to put that in there because they ran short on red poppets, but that's a completely different story. So I already had it, decided to install it in there. So that one is going to be sold in one of the fusion engines that I'm listing. And I do have a lightning banjo on the way, um, one or two for the fusion engine itself, but um, unfortunately they were out of stock, so I've got one shipping to me now from Airsoft Junkies. They were the only place that had it in stock, so see how they do um, with shipping because I've never ordered anything from them. And the last modification I did is the speed trigger right here. So you've got safe where obviously you can't pull the trigger. Um, I'll talk more about that. That was a huge pain to be able to uh, get to do. And um, so the trigger pull is, see my thumb moving? Me neither. So it's really, really, really short, um, which is great for accurate follow-up shots and initial shots, especially with using this as a DMR. That and it's just plain cool, and it looks really cool too. So these come in multiple colors. Um, my original plan, I have one in silver, um, but I decided the black looked um, better, so I went with black instead. No big deal. So uh, installing the Fusion in itself is pretty straightforward. Um, this video is going to be too intuitive, but I am going to talk about a few things um, about the Fusion Engine that I had to compromise with or adjust in order to, for it to fit in this GMP body. Alright, so right here we've got a version 2 generation 3 Fusion Engine from Polar Star. Um, this one is a spare one that I had that um, I've been doing some modifications on, but to show you guys um, what's inside here. So, so this uh, speed trigger right here was a bit of a pain to install. This one actually came twisted. Um, so I wasn't able to use this anyways. I did with some modification, but um, essentially just plop that one right on in there and uh, you'll have no problems. It hits this uh, micro switch right here, which is actually a button, and you'll hear that um, click and whatnot. And there's an Allen key, or a screw rather, on the back right there that lets you adjust um, how far you want your trigger. So it is adjustable. That's a pretty cool feature from the factory. Um, the only other modification I had to do, which is a huge pain because I went through a few of these, is um, this safety selector bar right here. You're going to have to trim some off the edge because if you put this trigger in and you want to go to safety uh, when it's under pressure, it's actually going to be hitting um, this bottom part and it's not actually going to engage. So it should be there but it actually ends up only going up and stopping right there. So I did have to trim this down significantly and do a lot of trial and error on this one piece right here. Even ran few, ran through a few of them um, with my first Fusion Engine. But, um, so yeah, uh, that's the only other thing to watch out for because I really like to have all the functionality. I hate 
you know, some people that put a Polar Star together, they don't have a charging handle, they don't have a dust cover, they bear, they have a fire selector with probably only one mode, whatever, they just, it's a pile of junk. So I want this one to keep all the functionality, so the safety selector was a big um, importance to me. And you know, gun safety too, so that's pretty cool. Uh, next thing I wanted to know is this little guy right here, the um, integrated grip line from Amped Airsoft that I installed on this one right here actually got me in a bit of trouble and I had um, horrible safety selector issues because of it. And um, the reason why is if I take this wiring harness off and you've got the wires for the two solenoids, this slips right off. This piece, if you push this in and pull this out, um, the whole line comes out. With the grip line, it actually screws in with this really nice uh, retaining system, so you won't have leaks, um, not unlike the uh, QD fitting. So you actually take this silver bit off, and you screw in the new line, and they even give you a tool that I threw away, or, you know, lost it, so keep this, but, um, and you do it a quarter turn at a time, and it fits right in there. So, um, now the problem with that. So I installed it and everything was good. I didn't have to drill this out or anything. Um, everything fit perfectly until you go to put this plate back on and I had ran everything above it and I put this plate back on and it was a really tight fit and I was like, okay, you know, whatever. And I did it with the other side too. And I went for my safety selector and it ended up being safe. I could still pull the trigger. And then it would be tough, it'd be like, and then flip that way. And then you could, it would go to semi and then full auto normally, but then you'd have to like jam it back into safe. And it like, it like flipped the fusion engine. And it wasn't good, but I contemplating leaving it, but I was like, no, nah, I've got to take everything apart and do it again. And it's always better to do it that way. So, how I fixed that problem is I took both of the solenoid wires and the um this piece the and the fcu wiring harness and i ran it underneath the grip instead of above it and this was a pretty tight fit and it's really tight in there everything's still tight but um it makes this entire surface flat when you go to put um your side cover back on so it was really flat and that fixed my fire selector problem so um hopefully if you do have that problem um that will be the answer to that the only other modifications I did with this is put in the new poppet and nozzle, but those are there's millions of tutorials of that on YouTube, so I'm not going to bother um, talking about that. But other than that, um, that's how I customized my fusion engine, all the problems I ran into, and um, I got it set in this body, this sexy, sexy body right here, really nice. We got no nothing, not even budge on safe, nice short trigger pull and auto works as well. It's always nice to test um, the solenoids to, you know, with all your fire modes without air connected just through the uh, FCU when plugged into a battery to test all those fire modes. So that about wraps it up for installing the fusion engine into the GMP body. Um, overall it wasn't that bad. It had a few challenges but I was able to overcome them and a few more that I still need to do like the uh, plate at the bottom of this grip. But that's the only thing. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, because I know this is really, um, this is going to be like the hardest challenge for people, especially switching to HPA or trying to install their own engine. Um, this is like the most difficult to do. So, if you do have any questions, please leave them down below. I know I had a lot, and I'd like someone to answer them. So, I'll answer your questions. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.